A short program of the European 2022 Championships has just finished and what an exhilarating ride that was. I mean, Leona Hendricks from Belgium is in second and Anna Sherbakova fell on a combination. But before we dive into that, let's begin from the top with the one and only unbeatable Camila Volieva, who coming into this competition, we were 99.99% sure that she was going to win and well, yes, she delivered in the short program. I think she gave us one of her best skates to this date because of the joy at the end of the program she radiated and I think that joy combined with the music and how well she skated, it created almost an, a magical moment, you know, where time stands still and the only thing that is moving is <laughs> this short program so the world begins to revolve around this piece of art because it truly was a piece of art and her she was the only one who did a triple axel her spins are as usual breathtaking her extensions are marvelous the only thing i have to comment on are her ridiculous component score like she got above 9.5 on all of her component score uh, <laughs> And she's a 15 year old girl, she does not deserve that high. Like, yes, in transition she has really good transitions, but in interpretation, skating skill, performance, like 9.5 means that you almost can't do it better. And she is absolutely not at the level of Jason Brown and Yuzuru Hanyu. I mean, some people even gave her tens in presentation and interpretation and that literally means that this that was perfection and it wasn't like it wasn't bad she has really good interpretation but it can be done better so i would say at maximum a eight maybe so that would realistically have put her seven points down at least and she would have about a seven point lead instead of an 15 points lead to Leona Hendricks because Leona Hendricks from Belgium is in second place and when she saw that her eyes literally like was on the verge of popping out one millimeter more and they would have fallen out of her eye sockets <laughs> it was wonderful to see how happy she was and she got that you know little small medals that you get from meddling at the short program um, but her second place was so much deserved she shouldn't have been surprised that she was uh, before Trusova and Sherbakova but since this is figure skating and the Russian interior girls are so overscored, she was. But like, she had the program of life. Everything, everything was on point. She has, her jumps were good, her spins are quick and beautiful, her posture is amazing and she really deserves high component score because she had good skating skills and interpretation. And I, I really hope that, I mean, now she has set her up for a chance at meddling, for real, since Anna fell. She actually has a chance of getting a medal if Anna falls in her free program and if Luna really nails her free program too. And that will be sensational and I, I'm, I'm really holding my thumbs that that is going to happen because I just can't explain how much I want her to medal and it not being our all Russian podium because that is destroying the sport. It is never good when one country dominates a sport so massively as the Russians do right now and especially if it's due not that it's deserved. Like they are really good but it's also a lot due to overscoring and corruption in my opinion uh, but let's move on to one of the Russians shall we to Alexandra Trusova in third place and b b before we talk about her short skate can we just take a moment and talk about her dress because why why has she wore this dress all throughout season it is not a great dress to begin with 
and especially in combination with her red hair, it clashes hideously <laughs> and I just want her to change it. A green dress would have been marvelous with her red hair. But luckily for her, she isn't getting points due to her dress, she is getting points due to her skate. And she did a pretty good skate. She fell on her triple axle, which I don't know why she continues trying with the triple axle. I have never seen her land one. Uh, maybe she does it in at practice, I don't know, but like, why Sasha, why? Um, but it doesn't cost that much on falling a, on a triple axle compared to landing a double. Her other jumps were good and she really tried to sell this program. At least we can give her that. However, the judges uh, <laughs> thought that she was the third best interpretation, which is like, um, um, no, no. They gave her 8.82 for interpretation, while the likes of Ekaterina Ryabova got 7.43, who had pretty good, I think. I don't think Sasha would... I, I think I would give Sasha a low 7 at a maximum, so uh, overall, if you would give her realistically component scores, she would have like scored about seven points lower and not just one point from Luna Hendricks who had the skate of her life and landed everything and had so much better skating skills than components. But well, <laughs> the PCS for the Russian interior girls are always inflated and speaking about that, let's talk about Anna Serbakova. Anna really needed to prove herself after the joke that was Russian Nationals uh, where the judges basically had decided beforehand that it was Camila, Sasha and Anna who would be on the podium regardless of what they did. And Anna fell on her long program there and still was in that even though at least four people should have been before her because they really killed it and did like triple axles and uh, quads and did not fell uh, and a lot of people are arguing that Lisa should be sent to the uh, Olympics instead of Anna and I'm on that team too. I absolutely adore Lisa. She has such a person on the eyes. Her triple axle is like she has made a deal with the devil or something because she has absolutely no uh, speed whatsoever and still it's amazing so it's almost impossible but like good for her uh, but I really want to see her at the Olympics because this is her last chance she's 25 and it would be so good so good for Russians to see that you can continue figure skating in your 20s and excel at it and not break down at 17 and having your peak at 15 years old. Anyways, uh, Anna really needed to prove to everyone uh, that she was worth going to the Olympics here at Europeans, but instead of proving that, she fell on her combination, which is the most devastating jump to fall on in a, a, a short program because it, you lose it so many points, especially if you do like Anna and falls on your first jump in the combination. And um, when I saw that, I my, my jaw just dropped because I expected her to maybe fall on the free program on the quads, but not on a triple. Not on a triple. I feel like history is repeating itself because we all know that the interior technique starts to falter around 17, that both with Evgenia Medvedeva, Lina Zagitova, especially Medvedeva, she was so consistent, but then she started to fall and crumble apart. And the same is happening with Anna, she has been so consistent, but now she's beginning to fall on her triples because her body is so overworked from jumping so much with bad technique and no muscles, just relying on basically no weight. And um, she, we're literally seeing her breaking apart in front of our eyes. Uh, like she has an, something around her knee at this competition, so she's obviously injured. Um, 
in the Grand Prix series she had taped her neck and in the summer she had broken her toe like someone give on a break before she literally breaks apart uh, it's a wonder that the girl could even skate and it's also a wonder that she is in fourth place she is in fourth place in a short program when she fell on her first jump in the combination that is impossible where did they find the point well they found it because of a terror bonuses <laughs> like uh, Oh, it gave me so mad. But like, just just take a look at their component scores. She's around nine at all of them. And while she has good transitions, her skating skills was bad this event. You can could really see that she was in pain. And they should have been around six. Um, her interpretation was good. I, I really like this program and she tries the best to sell it. I think it's exciting to watch, honestly, but it shouldn't have been above an eight, <laughs> too. Um, but because she's a Russian material girl, she gets those high points. Like, otherwise she would have been in 10th place with about 10 points lower. But, and also because she has good transitions, because at this moment PCS are basically transition scores. Uh, you can see in this column that I have, I have highlighted, they are the transitions for all of the top skaters and no other score is ever below the transitions. Uh, so if you are good at transitions, it's almost like the judges do not dare putting one of the other components lower than your transitions, which is ridiculous. Like, they are separated for a reason, otherwise they would all be called transition scores. Because the interior girls do have so good transitions, they always get ridiculously high component scores overall. And that is also the secret to Camila's uh, component scores that were all about 9.5, because she got a Wait, I must look it up. A transition score that was 9.54. So the judges literally had no choice but giving her 9.75 and 10s in the other com components. Like, um, which is just, ah, it, it bugs me to pieces. But that is what figure skating is at this moment. And just to wrap on up a bit, if she does not do a well free skate, she might not medal, which would be sens sensational. And she might lose her Olympic spot because I do not think, despite the power Ethereum have over the Russian Federation, I don't think they will send a girl who does not medal at Europeans. I think they would send Lisa instead, which I already think they should because she has proven herself to be much more consistent this season. But it is what it is, we will see. Let's move on and talk about the girls who were in place 5 to 7. In 5th place we have Ekaterina Kurakova who did so well. Uh, she also had, just as Leona, the skate of her life. Uh, she is originally from Russia but she has switched to Poland because, well, it's almost impossible getting into the Russian team and she wanted to have a long skating career and you can't do that if you like <laughs> peak at 17 just to be on the Russian team uh, and I think that was a very wise choice and I'm happy because she is such a character on ice and I'm just excited that we are gonna follow her for many 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 years to come and the joy the joy she radiated when she nailed her like short program it was priceless it made me so happy she did a little dance even <laughs> um i just loved it and then in sixth place we have anastasia oh what's her, her last name anastasia gubanova who is also from russia but competes for georgia so she can compete basically and she has just as Kurakova been quite inconsistent this season but she also made it at this short program and I was just happy to see that because she has oh, 
her interpretation is always beautiful and ah I I'm just happy for both of them. And then in seventh place we have, you guessed it, another Russian that is competing for Azerbaijan. And I, I just need a moment to talk about Yekaterina Ryabova's dress. I I I'm absolutely in love with this dress. I love the ombre, I love the colors, I love the gloves, you even have a matching face mask, which is a adorable and she I, I really like this program too she, she seems to have fun and I also just mainly love her because I'm I'm in love with her dress and that's that's how simple I am <laughs> sometimes and um, that was all of the top skaters but I'm just gonna take a bit moment to talk about the Estonian skater Eva Lotta Kibus who could have been at the top seven but like, she has so much potential. She was seventh at the Europeans in the last Europeans at 2020. And this time the events are in Estonia. She, she's skating for her home country. And I really rooted for her because you always want the skaters who are at their home ring to do their best. I mean, that you always want that. And she did really good. But then she doubled out on her triple loots. It was only a double. That only gives you zero points. Zero points in your show program. It's worse than falling. And oh, my heart just goes out to her because she has so good energy on the eyes and also one of the best dresses. Um, I think in this competition, uh, Eva Lotakibus had the third best dress, Ryabova the second, and in first place we have Marina from Italy. Her dress is literally art. <laughs> I mean, it is Van Gogh on a dress and I, I'm just here for it. I love it. She should get, honestly, extra points for her dress. Like, and Sasha should get, like, minus points. Like, no, okay, I'm, I'm not serious, but, but almost. Sasha you need to change your dress. Before I wrap this video up, because my voice is literally breaking at this point, I have been sick and I have asthma, so my voice is like dead, basically. Uh, I, I just quickly want to mention Yusuf Antalli Gård from Sweden, my home country. She placed at 18 and did pretty well, I think. Uh, she doesn't have um, that difficult jumps, but her artistry and theatrical is always on point. She should be rewarded much more for that, but the judges somehow thinks if you aren't good at jumping, you can't possibly be good at, you know, the artistry bit of figure skating, which, as we have discussed, is ridiculous because they are separated from for a reason. Oh, I just, oh, I hate the judges. Uh, anyway, I, I'm glad that she went through to the finals because I love her free skate so much. It's to the Joker. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see how everything um, falls into place on Saturday. And I will see you then. Bye.